Sophie and I are making this wonderful video because it's in loving memory of Daddy Derek. And on this day, every year, luckily we're blessed to come into town and visit the cemetery where her dad is. And also, I'm sure like many, we go with family, friends, relatives, and it really means a lot to us. So for all of those out there who have lost their dads or maybe widows, I'm sure you guys totally relate and understand. So we are making this wonderful video collection for Daddy Derek and in loving memory of him. So 2019. Like 2019 December. going into 2020 and with all the love and memories. So we are releasing some balloons. Sophia has some balloons she got with Grandpa and some flowers. And here comes Grandpa Jerry. Okay, so rain or shine, we're doing it today, guys. Rain or shine. And yeah, last year it was so cold, we were gonna get frostbite to share our love and remembrance. This year, if we're gonna feel like crying, the rain has us beat. So I love seeing everyone and it's so great to get together. So with all the love, we love Daddy Derek. Some of the Christmas stuff is still out. Grandma Sally got some great flowers. Oh my god. Sophia with all of her cousins. And some loving memories, flowers. It's the day he became an angel. Yes. Every year that we're here, Sophia has her own way of doing it. I love coming here with the family. It makes our hearts just so happy and filled with love. Um, the rain has me beat on all the waterworks this year. So I don't feel like crying. It's amazing. I was like, if I can't come here today, I would be sad. So um, I'm just happy that we all get to spend our time, bring our love. And we all know Daddy Derek's with us all day long every year long all every moment long um but we'd love to come together here <laughs> there's the girls celebrating the life of derek what do you think sophia beautiful Yes. Do you want to run around and play? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. And I got to visit today with my great grandma and my daughter our grandfather and great-grandfather's graves and it's such an awesome spirited happy vibe when you get to come back and kind of let loose after the funeral and a couple years has gone by so i am going to show some of the grave here and the cemetery here i hope you guys and this week's challenge maybe take the time or take the time to plan to go visit your loved one that you're thinking about at their cemetery. Or that means hop on a plane and fly there, drive two hours to get there, or plan the time with a loved one that you want to take with you. I know it's always something crazy to me whether I forget the cemetery, whether I forget how to get there, or if I'm like just feeling, I don't know, like bummed on myself because I couldn't visit as much or I couldn't put flowers there as much. I just know that maybe we should write some of our feelings out and let those weights go. It's beautiful when you can get up here and take the time, but it's also such in, in our happiness and in our good spirits every day that we think of our loved ones, the memories we had with them, which is more important maybe than visiting them at the cemetery. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I had to create a video while I was here for you guys. Um, and over the years, it's been so different.
from all of our family members. Steph, honey, don't move that. From all of our family members dealing with loss in such different ways, whether that's arguments and fights around someone's death, taking other plots in the cemetery, or there's so many tragic things that happen around a loss of someone. And it has, you know, the business of death has to be done, you know, within seven days from the house, from estate sales, from picking out all of the stuff that you see, what's written on the grave. I know for me, one of my loved ones that I had a hard time losing, um, I got to go to the visitation, but I did not get to go to the funeral because it was two hours away. I didn't have a car at the time. I couldn't get there. And to me, the visitation meant the world because it was open casket. I could see and I could have my enclosure and I could have that. And it always bothered me that, you know, I didn't get to go to the funeral and be present and be there just because I had no one to go with and take me. So however things happen, we have to let go of the trauma and how everything worked out because a lot of people have a hard time dealing with all the things surrounding that. So I'm going to list below all of the stuff that happens when we lose someone. Maybe that'll help us be prepared for next time and or for ourselves, our wills, and those who love us and who will grieve us so that we can return the favor of giving back in a much more peaceful way because accidents happen, death happens, and we love our loved ones no matter what. And we wish we could do everything perfect, but nothing's really perfect when it comes to loss death and moving on. I love you guys and enjoy this beautiful day. I can't wait to list all these fun things that really goes on that's not fun for us when we lose someone, but it's good that we educate ourselves, remind ourselves, and we're prepared. Love you guys and have a great time visiting the ones you love. believe that I'm visiting my home it's been almost three years two to three years since I've been here it really means a ton to me um, so let's check out the yard first okay so it's like a little chilly it's May May is my favorite month it's my birthday month and I always just remember May being so crazy it was like Cinco de Mayo it was prom there was graduation I had I literally sat right here and I had one of the most romantical moments of my life with my high school love and crush, Derek, who's passed away. So it's so awesome to be back and, you know, I've had a daughter and to think of all these loving moments here, right here, literally, um, from kisses to calls to like seeing him drive by and honk at me. Um, it's just so romantical. So I love my mom's yard. It's She's always so good at gardening. Check out these trees and how big they got. Okay, so let me take you to the back patio. This is a front yard and I love the front doors. My mom got new front doors. So I used to sneak in these front doors. I used to sneak in Sophia's dad, my high school love and I'll show you the front staircase soon. But let me show you the back patio where we took our prom pictures during this time of year. Come this way. Oh my God, my mom has all these flags. Cabana! We didn't have this when I lived here. So we did not have that at all when I lived here. Okay, so this is, like we have, we planted so many flowers. It's crazy. Like look at this walk. Like. Look at how big these trees are. So, the black squirrel. There's a little black squirrel. I love the black squirrel. It's here from over here. Look at him. Oh, the black squirrel's coming down. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> okay, so my mom never used to have this right here, which is crazy. We used to have a pond, and I used to have to be out here helping my mom change that koi pond. Um, I don't miss that, but I do miss the fish. Love them. There's some kernels. Like, my mom is like a gardenist. She is so good at what she does. All these things. Um. <laughs> 
And look at this. There's a lot of noise because we live right on the street. But it's one of my favorites. We have so much property. our prom pictures um and i can pop these in this video it is so amazing visiting home seeing where i went we once took her prom photos to now being here with my daughter um okay and my room is up there <laughs> so um my high school boyfriend derek um used to like park here or he would throw his stuff up there at my window to wake me up and then he'd sneak in all right let's go into those doors where he's sneak in <laughs> just to show this famous area in my mom's yard there she's got some other stuff that hasn't been here but the famous driveway i used to just lay out in the driveway So I used to lay out in the driveway all day long. Like that was my main thing was laying out in the driveway. I have no idea why. Or laying in the back patio. And this was like the fame hallway area. And I like this view of the house because the house is like seriously so much to undertake. But this is when my mom had the conversation of me not talking to my boyfriend anymore because of all the craziness going on. So this area always has a crazy special place in my heart. Um, my mom's doing some construction in the back patio. And this back patio is where I sent in my casting tape for 16 and Pregnant, which turned into Teen Mom. So I always love to visit this and see, wow, how much have I changed? But um, the trees are huge. Like the garden has just blossomed. Um, and I used to sneak right through those trees when I needed to sneak home. Um, and my high school boyfriend, Derek, who has passed sadly, we used to sneak right through there and I would come in the house and be like, quiet. Um, but I love the garden. It is so peaceful now. Um, I've been through a lot. So over the years and now being back here after two years, it's like such a beautiful place to be in. Okay, let's get inside. <laughs> so now I'm in the house. Okay, this is my I don't know, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your long hair. This is my princess stairwell to my bedroom. And this is why my boyfriend used to sneak in the front door and just go right up. And we used to sneak even my friends up here. It was like the coolest thing to everyone. So um, yeah, let's go up and see the old room. Welcome to the room I grew up in. Many of you may have recognized this room, and it is a room filled with emotions, memories. Maybe I should turn on the light. Emotions, memories, and so much more. This is a bed I have slept on. I have had memories of relationships on, where I've coddled my baby and had the best moments, and also work moments and drama family moments. There is a lot of triggers that we talked about, a lot of memories. And guess what? I don't want to forget those memories. I love that I can talk about those memories. And speaking of memories, there's one thing in my office that I noticed my mom kept because I'm just visiting now, is this. These amazing flowers were given to me just like we may have if we had a high school love that passed away. There's a lot of road noise. <laughs> a high school love passing away. So I got pink flowers. I had a pink corsage, pink everything. That's what I always loved. And I love that I can have some of these memories here so I can look at them. Not all of us have that. I don't even have the memories that I wish I had. And that means from our old cell phones, whether someone stole it, the technology faded, Something bad just happened. So things that are not technological that, that have saved, technological that have been saved, like dyed, dried old flowers, really means a lot to me because I'm like, thank God I have that to look at. I just want to practice a little, a little something, a little treasure in our memory bank. Just like I just shared with you, all of these fun, amazing memories. Good, bad, ugly. 
loving, kind, amazing. I simply am so grateful for the little things that I have. I remember when this bed was over on that wall and I had gotten in trouble so much from, and there's different times in our lives where our communication was cut from the one we loved, right? So this time was when I could not, I was not legally allowed to see the one who I love that I'm having a difficult time with talking about and missing and the one who I had suicidal thoughts of and bereavement of and sadness of, depression about. At this time that I'm thinking of being in this room and I knew that I had his goggles and some photos that he had given me and just some little things and I was like, you know, if I have to stop talking to this person, if I need to break up with them, like I need to just give these things back because it helps me remembering so many memories. It makes me feel like I still need to be in this relationship. So me being this silly, silly, emotionally immature person that I was at the time, I called that person when I shouldn't have. I needed to still let things simmer from courts and our family and everyone else. And I was like, hi, can you just come get your belongings? because I shouldn't really have these belongings. Now we really need to ask ourselves, was that really needed? No, we wanted to keep those things. And I did a lot of silly things like that in my past. I gave back an engagement ring, should have kept, I would have died to have today because I loved it so much. And I still wonder to this day, why didn't his mom give me his stuff for my daughter, our daughter? And then you can start placing blame on other people and other things, rather than, wow, well, if we've got to rethink things through, we can't judge ourselves at that age, whatever age we were. Maturity and immaturity plays a big factor into our emotional well being. Maybe making a pie chart would be best for us, saying this age and our current age, what we have in common, what was different then. Uh, what has changed to now? Because I can tell you my pie chart would be so different about mature and immature. There's a lot of things that I don't do in my relationships that I first did with my first love, the one I lost my virginity with, the one who has passed away. And that plays through on how we can live a healthier lifestyle, have healthier relationships. When we lose our other loved ones, we deal with it in a much healthier way too. So try out the pie charts. I actually am going to redo mine again because I am very curious. And play with some of the triggers of the memories that you've lost and why. So for me, someone stole my cell phone. All of my memories that I always talk about my daughter to, like from going on walks and hikes and when we fly and we visit, I just go and I try to drive and show her. But here's the thing. We can't keep going to the same places and thinking we're gonna have those same experiences or same memories, it just isn't there. But what a blessing is it that we get to have those same memories and blessings in our minds and in our hearts and like we've experienced it. That's joy. So I truthfully love that. There's some other things that I think are great. When we come into town and we visit where we had our lives growing up and had so many crazy memories, and learning moments and you see your favorite streets maybe you visit the cemetery where you loved one died I think that is so special and so true to everything that we have and what we do I love you guys I hope this brought up some really great things I'll put our challenges below feel free to leave comments or attach a touch of photos and your pictures much love to you and all the love today I love this part of the house it's like everything I've ever wanted. So my grandpa was a carpenter. He literally made my floor everything that I wanted. I basically, like I love cars. So I wanted a racetrack with wood around my bedroom. So check out the wood under the bed. I mean, this is not <laughs> exactly how I have my room, but my mom has changed some things about my room since I've been here. So I can't even believe it myself. Um, okay, and you can't see it, but so I have the racetrack around the floor and I put a diamond, a wooden diamond in my floor because I wanted that shape. 
So if you can't see it to me, diamonds, racetracks, those are kind of important things to me still to this day. Okay, so this bed, can you believe it? I was dating with a twin bed. <laughs> and I also had my daughter's crib right here for six and pregnant teen mom. Right here used to be Sophia's crib. Um, and I've always had this bed. And you know what, still to this day, this is the most comfortable bed I have. I don't know if it's the size or what, it's just like spring-loaded, it's easy. Um, I mean, I had a romance life, I've had everything with it. So shout out to all the little twin beds because they're rocking it. Um, but yeah, I love sky baby blue. Um, I love my curtains. Um, this is again, you know, Rapunzel, Rapunzel. Now that it's rained in the weather, it's taken away all the things, of course, that my high school boyfriend used to love to throw up here, wake me up and get my attention. So I truthfully love and miss everything about my room. I love my closet. I remember when I actually had my bed on this wall and my dad, we heard my dad's steps coming from the hallway. And I was like, oh my God, we slept in. And so Derek, my high school boyfriend, came in my closet and was like hiding in here. It was so funny. And I love this closet. I mean, we have some old basketballs, Buzz Lightyear, Toy Story stuff, um, all these closets. It's like little clothes from my daughter now and lovely cards. So it's a lot of love memories. I have a chest. I have my grand, my granddad's old coats in here. Oh my God. These are legendary. Um, I mean, my granddad's the one who like pretty much re rehabilitated this old historic home. So it's now like just so fabulous, but I love it. This is like the best closet of my whole life. It doesn't matter where I move or where I'm at. I love my closet. I love my room still. Now my little bathroom. So my bathroom, I love this because I picked out like the light, the light green colors. I picked out the emerald, the sinks. I wanted the flowers. Um, so if you check it out, the floors, the flowers, the sink, this was just kind of my great vibe. So I like greens and blues and I like garden coming into the home. So this is one of my favorites. Ah. So thank you for visiting my room with me. I love it so much. Like the memories are so real here. It's the best ever. And look at my little desk. Oh my God, this is me at homecoming one year. My old, old, old date. Like here's one to not ever bring out of the closet. My mom framed it. Oh my God, I used to look like that. And my friend back then, he passed away too. It's like, oh, so sad. And this was my prom corset, or this is my prom bouquet from Derek. And I save this. So it's like literally so loving, such a memory from high school. Um, I'm, and I loved pound puppies. Um, I think, I don't know, what is this? Just like random? Okay, I don't know if it's random stuff. I used to collect shoes, like those art shoes. Um, oh my God, this is from when I was in elementary. I did my first book and illustrations. It's called I'm Not Telling You. Um, and I literally did this whole book. That's amazing. And then foreign dollars from travels, trip stuff. Oh my goodness. You never know what you're gonna find when you come back to visit your room. <laughs> Honor me up there. It's so cute. It's like some of these things, oh, it just melts my heart. What is in here? I'm like, what do I have in here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, let's see my DVD collection back then. Or not even DVDs. This is cassettes. Okay. We got My Uncle the Alien. We have Secret of the Lost Legend. Oh, you could tell I like dinosaurs and aliens. Definitely The Lost World of Jurassic Park. So I'm woo, such a big fan of those. Jurassic Park everywhere. Um, this must have been like a home video. And it's Ventura Pet Detective. Oh my God, all I have to say, or when Venture calls, <laughs> um, all day long, love this. So this is my cassette tape, say what? <laughs> like, let's take that back, that's so crazy. 
My mom still has all of these. Oops. Oops. And I have like in a dog's heaven, um, Flintstones. I have turtles. Oh my God. Like these are the cassettes Wizard of Oz. I'm gonna get you sucker. Like I grew up, I mean, I knew like Rugrats and I've seen every movie ever. And that is so cool that I have those cassettes. I'm like, what is in a Nothing that one did. It's like, I wanna hunt these drawers. Oh, I took all the good stuff out of this one. Woo! This is a cool little thing. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, that's the room. Let me show you some of my other favorite parts okay, of the house. So next to my bedroom is a guest bedroom. This bedroom is legendary because in my New York Times bestselling book, my teenage dream ended. This is where the virginity was lost, the after prom chapter. It all went down right here, ladies and gentlemen, where it was big, 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 big. And then we kind of made it happen and it was like, ouch and uncomfortable. So lots of love, lots of memories, lots of life learning challenges. Um, so I always love this because it is really just so cute, so romantical. Um, and then we went back to my room and it was much easier. Hey now, I love our guest room. Okay, so we are leaving the guest room. We're gonna head down the hallway. We're on the top floor in my house. Um, and some of the things are done and some are not done. Like there's pictures of our house, like a mural of our house um, from a famous artist. Now this room, this very room is actually technically my sister's room. And the part in the book or in any news or anything that you've heard, this is actually what made a rift between our families. We were caught getting it on. Like this is like, you know, when people are like, oh, my parents never caught me. This is when my dad caught me. Um, and my sister actually had a bigger bed. It was like a super cow king. Um, so my mom switched out the furniture since then. But this very, not very bad, this very area, there was a bed and this wall frame, my dad. Okay, so we were stupid. We left on the hall lights. And then all of a sudden I saw the hall lights go off and then I saw like a weird flashlight from here and I was up in the bed. And then before you know it, these lights are on. Um, Derek, my high school love, he's like punched by someone and I'm like naked. I'm like, what is going on? And guess what? My dad was the one who caught us and then hit him, of course, rightfully so. So, and it was like right here, they were like standing in, like Derek and my dad were over here, it was so crazy. So I like what my mom did with the room since then. There's been a lot of, a lot of crazy memories. So in this floor, you see a heart and my sister got to pick out whatever she wanted. So this just speaks, oh, and I see some stars, see some stars. So it's so cool what my grandfather has done. But this room, it's a naughty room. Okay, so now we're gonna go downstairs. This is like, I used to have to clean for chores. This stair stairwell is like such a hassle to clean all these steps, I'll tell you that. So let's go downstairs. Okay, so we're coming down and there are some fabulous photos. So the time that I helped my mom start her mom and me pepper sauce, Sold out in all the stores. Thank you. Shout out to Whole Foods, hi all those chains. And I was so dark. It looks so different from my fam. And my baby's there. Okay, now this picture, oh my God. It's the first time my sister got her hair with highlights. My grandparents got their wedding anniversaries or, you know, renewed. And there's me. I'm like, ooh. And my cousins, oh my God, the memories. This is when we used to do historical Preservation Alliance um, thing. So we used to have tours throughout our house. We had horse carriage rides throughout this these neighborhoods. And it was really so cool and so much fun. These are a bunch of the houses that are on the historical preservation tour that we did. And here is the largest, biggest room in the house. It's like, what? We don't even use this room. So uh, check it out. We just uh, sometimes gather here. <laughs> Okay, so we're walking through here, 
And everyone loves these thrones. Everyone just digs them. Okay, and this is where we've had many of conversations on MTV's Teen Mom, like when I kicked my mom out of the house because of our physical fight, and I had to go live across the street, which we still have that house too. So this room, this dining table, tons of memories, and I definitely remember the kitchen. All right, kitchen is where all the crazy drama was, but also where all the food, love, fun, hard memories, like I vividly remember being up here um, right after Christmas um, in 2008, clock time. <laughs> and this is where my parents discovered like my high school love had passed away and it was kind of like not such a great conversation to wake up to. So we love it. Now I just love visiting. I love everything about the kitchen. It is so, I just love the house. It just has such a warm feel. And you know, I used to be like filled with bad feelings and bad memories. And now it's just because I went through depression and of my loss and then moving away and all the craziness of teenagers and parents, divorces. But now it's just like such a beautiful place to visit. So let me show you a couple more things like the music room that just fill my heart. Okay, so we're going through, this is a little stop, little pit stop. We have the wet bar and all the cute little stuff that everyone loves. And let me just say, before any of these floors were redone and anything like that, I had the hugest um, splinter that got onto the end of my foot. Like it was huge guys. And I was so scared to tell my mom for some reason. And I was like, oh my God. So I still have a mark from that. Um, it was ginormous. I felt like I was Jesus with like the stick through my foot. But on a flip note, this is the coolest phone ever. And I absolutely love this. And I used to dial everyone. Dial my grams, dial my mom, dial my dad. And that was pretty much it. How amazing is that? Now, one of my cutest little bathrooms I love this bathroom. I prefer this bathroom. And it's just so like girly and like loving. So I love this cute bathroom. Everyone does. Okay, two of my favorite rooms. The music room, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, the music room has just always been kind of crazy. There's like a mop in the floor we have bugs all around that are so cool and amazing. This is sometimes where we put the Christmas tree. This is where we play piano. I used to play piano, win recitals, and not like my piano teacher. <laughs> so what would I be doing visiting home? Not playing a little bit of something. <laughs> and I'm like, and that's all I'm gonna play. <laughs> you can actually play record I think there's some other craziness going on here and I just love I just love love this music room it just has been so much fun i remember when i used to come over with my daughter for christmas and it just and i always help keep the party going so to the best music room ever i miss it the music room and the music room you would think is filled with tons of music vibes and everything like that so we do have a piano in this room we also in this room put our Christmas tree in this room every year. And I vivid, vividly remember a year where we had the Christmas tree. We had a couple of them here. We had gifts. And I was actually pregnant with the one who has passed away. So beyond being pregnant and also being filled with all those hormones and emotions. It was really crazy for me, and I'm sure however you guys have experienced loss, the reason why we have such a deep connection and we kind of lose ourselves and go into this dark, we have all these circle of emotions, is because at this time, we had a lot going on in our lives. And no one was to say 
that life was easy when you lost that person, especially when it's unannounced and you have no idea. So for instance, my example is my loved one passed away three days after Christmas. So when I brought up the Christmas tree, that was a trigger. And I think a challenge in this video and in this episode is to find those triggers because just like in ASMR that's trending right now about voice and words and things, those are triggers that trigger us to think and be connected. So the trigger things for us in our self-love journey and finding our love for ourselves and being strong and confident and beautiful and glowing again is just knowing that in 2008 for me, I was trying to celebrate Christmas and it was a hard Christmas on me because I was receiving gifts for a baby that was unborn with someone who I loved but that I couldn't talk to right now because as I show in some of my tours and in my books and in my shows, I got caught sneaking him in and my dad hit him and it created this whole rift between our families and it was a serious court law problem. So I had to seriously take a break legally from my baby's father. But I remember after he passed away, these triggers. It was Sophia's first Christmas, so if you have a child, just think of that. Um, I had a Christmas tree, and I actually have the photo like where I'm just trying, I'm just trying to put it together. I'm trying to keep my shit together. It's winter, you know, if you have seasonal defect disorder, emotional disorder, it's like I'm already like, I don't like winter. I don't like maybe Christmas right now. I'm not happy. I'm gonna try to be happy because I wanna be happy. And then I have a child and I want her to experience her first Christmas, right? So my father was here. I'm like having matching Santa hats. And I'm just so overwhelmed with anger and just like wanting to just do suicidal thoughts. And I just was like, wow, why do I want to end my life over this? I know what I'm going through is hard. And some people will not understand that. But I want us to challenge ourselves about the triggers. Because this room, it's filled with light. It's filled with love. It's filled with music. It's filled with all these fun, artistic, neglectic things. But when it turned to winter and we decorated with Christmas trees and it was like, all, all I can lead up to thinking of is when I had to feel last year, what a surprise and a shock that someone I loved had passed away. And then thinking through a year after that, and it was just so, like my body, like our emotions, we don't wanna feel that we're gonna lose someone again, that we miss now, that we wish was here with our child now, or our new memories, or our new careers, or our new things that we want them to be with. That is a big trigger, and it's so overwhelming to think about. So I love sharing this with you. I wanna write some other great, trigger things to think of in a positive way, in a healing way, and in a happy way that helps us say, okay, I'm gonna go visit my home for Christmas and I know that I would be triggered by this and I know what hardships that brings with it because it was so hard that year. It was so hard at that time and it was, no one else would deal with that as great as I have. You need to tell yourself that you've dealt with that the best way that you can probably better than anyone in that situation. Give yourself some credit. And just know, there's an airplane. Just know that our lives will keep going and keep moving on. And maybe we need to take a break from visiting the same place each year and try doing Christmas different every year. So something fun that I did with my, with my daughter and it made my family sad. Uh, granted, I understand how they feel. Their, their child's not coming home to visit anymore for Christmas. My, my mom decided not to put up the Christmas tree this year because I wasn't visiting. She got so sick and tired of me not visiting. But remember, do what is best for you. Your family needs to understand they can't be selfish as you're helping yourself get the healthiest, vibrant you. And so you can share your story with others and help them and not be so, you know, so bogged up into your emotions and in your distress that you can help others. So I love, this is some things that I've loved to do. Maybe you guys do them yourselves. 
You can share below in the comments. I cannot wait to read. I'm gonna open this, this course up for comments and lots of sharing because this should be a very cool and supportive group so that we all know we're definitely not alone. There needs to be more communication of this, more self-love tips, more challenges, more fun. But what I really loved was we were in different countries every year for Christmas or New Year's. There was no sadness. I just wasn't going to allow that anymore. I needed to break that mold. So whether it's Shanghai, Hong Kong, Macau, um, wherever you want to go and experience culture and different things, peace. I welcome that so much during winter because people in general aren't liking winter and aren't liking maybe the seasonal averageness of it. It kind of gets your emotional self in a rut if you have lost someone in winter times. So I think that was so great to talk about. I cannot wait for the next episode. So much self-love. Love yourself today. And I'm so proud of you. Show a 360. Hopefully you got to see the up and the down of that. But this is like the quintessential place of like Christmas. We'll have dinners here. But there's an awesome painting I think you guys should see of me and my mom. I always wanted to keep that alive. Oh, the clock's coming up. Okay, now yeah, here's some of our favorites of my daughter. Um, I just love the top one. I love the bottom. And then my mom has her own quirky stuff in there. Just gorgeous. Like this is family specialty room and everything. I really think that is the best of visiting my home. I love the challenge of it because I think sometimes we're like, is all of our stuff gone? We face some fears of visiting home. Um, and I just have to say, I have loved so much of Council Bluffs, Iowa, and I always do. They always support me, even when it feels like it's just made up in our heads that they don't. So I can't say enough. And I hope you guys love this visiting a home challenge just as much as I have. It has been so great. Love you guys. Those who are self-loving, getting over loss, living after loss, and loving yourself again after loss. And I just welcome you to join me. And I hope you love the gold apple. So I am in a place, it is my very own home that I was raised in, I grew up in. So many people saw me go through such dramatic and crazy times in this city and in this home where I'm at right now. I lost the love of my life, Derek Underwood, in 2008. And I, whether we lose our loved ones by accident, by knowing, by being involved, we're all so deeply affected by however that happens sometimes with those certain people. I've lost a lot of loved ones and each and every person has been so different. There are, you know, some people, certain things and certain emotions and being in this amazing foyer and front room of my home, I was so compelled to just do this short video clip to start us off to get us on the right foot. And I also challenge you after watching this video, if possible, because I know sometimes it's just not possible to go visit your home or you don't want to yet, or you just have such bad feelings, memories around a city place it could just be dark to you. I challenge myself over the years when I can to come visit and to come literally see every place that I have memories that pop up in my head. It's just been a resourceful tool for me and it can certainly help you. I love that I'm in the home that at one time I felt so alive in, so free in, the best memories and the best times in the most love, the most happiest feelings. But then I also remember a time where it was a place where I felt suicidal. I hated this whole town, city. I didn't like anything about it. Even the person who I loved and I had all these cherished memories with, my mind just like made it such a negative. And when you have crazy brain or negativity impacted on your emotions because of our loss. Like our, there's just emotions that we go through when we're in bereavement. And I had to educate myself on that. 
That is what was craziest to me. So I'm so happy I get to talk to you about this. So balancing the funnest of times and the most loving and amazing memories with now this crazy brain negativity that I have and just sadness and not happiness. But that one person there who made these differences in those things isn't here, but I am. And I'm deeply affected and I'm bothered by it. And why isn't there anyone there to help me? I realize I have to help myself. So it is such a beautiful place. If we can take in this moment and this time, starting from 2008, now we're in 2019. It's been 10 years, not going on 11. And I have to say, time really is the biggest factor in understanding and growing your self-love, living after loss. I see it so much with all my friends every day. And I understand their years and I understand the time that they're going through. And I just help like myself, like, you know, do not judge yourself. Do not be hard on yourself. The things that like when you go on dates or when you go out with your family or you may do certain activities or certain trips and maybe it's out of the ordinary, but who are you to not challenge yourself to keep living, learning more about you and this bereavement cycle and this loss cycle and more about how to self-love yourself, especially in the world that's changing ever so rapidly all the time. Okay, I was walking through their house on my way out because I'm about to leave, and I saw their front foyer filled with all these lovely, gorgeous memories of my grandma, my grandfather, who helped my mom build this home and our home. And it's just old pictures of them. Oh my God, it's like, if that's what it looks like when you uh, have your old car, that's amazing. And is this what happens when you get married? The boy has his head down, say, what? <laughs> this is my dad. I love this. It is so good to see this. I'm so proud of my family and all the generations of my family. I absolutely love my home house and everyone's lives and hard work and dedication has been on this over the years. I am so blessed to have an amazing home like this. The home challenge, I love it.